Hi, and welcome to the Intentional Wealth Update from Morton Brown Family Wealth. I'm Dennis Morton here with Katie Brown. Katie, how are you doing? Hi, Dennis. Great. How are you? Good. We're here today to talk a little bit about focus, how we choose to focus our team, how that shows up as focus for our clients, and how that focus can help make us better advisors, better investors. The way we do this, and this is an exercise that goes back three or four years, thanks to our, our coach, Steve Sandusky, we appreciate this. We choose three words that are going to help define our intention and our focus for the year. Katie, we've gone through this exercise a lot of years. What does it do for you to kind of set those three words to start the year? You know what? It allows us to think a little bit expansively, I think, and, and to say, okay, what are going to be the motivators? Where are the areas that individually and as a team can can really, as you said, focus or can hone in on, can can help us to be better in our jobs and our roles and our profession and, and how we show up every day. So I think it, it, it helps to set that direction and gives us something to like tie back to to say, okay, how are we doing in these areas? Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. So today we're going to talk about our three words for 2023, which are influence, confidence, and simplify. Let's start with influence. All right. This, this has been an important one, one that has shown up a lot because of what we heard from the people that we talked to last year. We didn't hear a lot of optimism last year. There was a lot of pessimism, you know, worrying, are we in a recession? Or are we not? Is this a bear market? What do I do? There was a lot of confusion. It seemed like one darn thing after another in 2022, which had us thinking about how can we be better influencers? Why does this word resonate with you? Yeah. Well, just naturally in our role, in our position, you know, through our conversations with clients, we are influencing how they're feeling about things, how they're thinking about things. We're influencing their behavior. And it's important to recognize that for both the, the good and the bad, potentially. To recognize it's an incredible opportunity to help bring forward some information, some context to help influence how they're thinking about things. But it's also, it's a little bit of a weight and a responsibility mm -hmm. uh, because it, it could go in a number of different directions. I think it's really important to think about because I'm not sure that all advisors necessarily take the time to recognize that the words coming out of my mouth are going to influence how this person feels throughout the day. And so we just want to be cognizant of that and how we're showing up. Yeah. yeah. Here's, here's one way I've practiced that influence so far this year. It's pretty common at this time of year. We've turned over a new leaf into 2023. Someone might ask, what do you think is going to happen? this year? What's the market going to do this year? And I have a choice. I can either take the bait and say, I think the S&P is going to end up here. I think interest rates are going to end up there. But that would do two things. One, it would influence the person to think that I know what I'm talking about, that I know what's going to happen, which is not true. I have no idea where the market's going to end up. Nobody knew last year. No one knows this year. Or I can choose to say, I don't know. Stop the conversation there and use that power of influence to talk about the proactive things, the optimistic things. So we, heard, you know, we want to turn that pessimism on its head because there's a lot of things you can do. There are a lot of things that could be good in the future and will be good in the future. But, we, but if we get bogged down in predictions, we're going to find ourselves wrong more than we are right, and it doesn't move the needle. It doesn't get us where we need to be. So let's use that superpower we have to influence people, to be optimistic, to be proactive, to engage. And then we, we kind of put predictions where they belong, which is, on the trash heap, which is where they always end up at the end of the year is on the trash heap, right? <laughs> yeah, the predictions almost become more of a game. You know, if you if you can treat that almost like the, the fun little gambling on the side, but like you said, really influence where it matters and influence yeah. where our clients and our team are focusing, then I think that's that's the more productive use of that. Yeah, yeah, very true. So our second word is confidence. And here, here's the irony about confidence. We, we believe that confidence is really the desired outcome from any financial plan. When you're engaging with an advisor, you're not trying to get to X dollars. You're not trying to make X income. You're trying to be confident in your plan and the process. So to try and instill that confidence. Ours starts from a very interesting place. We don't know all the things, right? Like we are confident that we don't know everything, but we can work to build confidence over time. Where do you think that confidence comes from, Katie? How can we instill that? A lot through planning work and a lot through conversations, getting to know clients and understanding them and allowing them to get to know us too. And 
recognize where each other's maybe concerns pop up or the, the triggers occur. So I think a lot of it is through building trusted relationships. And then, like you said, acknowledging we don't know all the things and there's a whole heck of a lot of things out there that we can't control. So we need to plan around the uncontrollables and embrace that a thorough plan is going to, is going to be a constant change and that's okay. Constant change is yes. good. Our confidence is really grounded in knowing that we can plan thoroughly. We can work through that change. We can accept and embrace that change. Right. And, and we know, we talk about this often where our levers are. So yes. if we need to adjust, we can adjust and it's, it's doing the work to build that confidence. Yeah. And, and we're kind of fighting against the tide here a little bit because there's a lot of information all the time. There's, if you want it, there's financial information everywhere, every day, all the time. But that information can be tempting because it can say, hey, maybe I need to be doing something different or maybe my plan is wrong or it just it plants those seeds of doubt. So that's why having confidence as a word for the year is a reminder that, listen, we need to work hard against that because the natural order is to kind of poke holes in that confidence all the time. We even talked, we had a long conversation about this earlier today. It was really kind of fun planning for it. And it's why we really get engaged with these words. They help to focus our attention. But we also talked about our careers. You know, we, we've both been advisors for the better part of 20 years. But if you kind of put a point in our starting spot and then where we are today, our advisory journey has been like this. It's been different job titles, different focuses, different firms, you know, all, all business structures, everything else, all to end up being an advisor and you never know like what zigs and zags that's going to happen, but your confidence in the outcome and, and being true to yourself is, is really an important part of that journey. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's, I, I think the wonderful thing about that zigging and zagging is that we're thrown into the mix, just like everybody else. You mm -hmm. know, we, we don't know exactly what's going to happen. And in every encounter that we have, every opportunity we have to speak with a client and, and get to understand them better and where they're coming from and where their stressors are, help us to be able to adapt and, and change and, and be able to support them where they're at. And yes. so that, that whole 20 year process, so much of it is building the experience so we can show up confidently and help instill that confidence in others. Yes, very true. And this last one, we, we, we riffed on this one for a long time. The last word is simplify, simplify. This is great because there's a great, you know, apocryphal line. I don't know if it was Mark Twain or Jerome Powell who said this, but um, that whole line, I would have written a shorter letter, but I didn't have time because simplicity takes work. You know, then again, the natural order of thing is to kind of poke holes in our confidence and create complexity out of simplicity. And we see that all the time. The obstacles to simplicity, it's everything from investments that you don't understand. It's multiple accounts that you can't track. And sometimes it's conversations that you really can't have with the persons that you love the most. We, we talked about this analogy of the complexity that builds up inside our heads. You want to talk through that a little bit, Katie? Yeah. And, and I show that sometimes personally with myself, if I feel like anxiety building, sometimes I just have to take a step back, take a deep breath and say, okay, what are the one or two th things that are, have been sitting in the back of my mind that are nagging me that I need to address, or I need to take care of. And if I can knock those things out, then all of a sudden it's like, yes. okay. And so it's, it's batting away some of those complexities to clear that path forward. We see that in the planning process when people say, oh my gosh, they come in, they may feel overwhelmed. They might feel like you know, the wheels are falling off a little bit financially. We're trying to put this all back together. Just the, the act of talking about it, you can feel the weight being relieved and, and it's a simplification. It's taking all those things that were stacked up on the shelves of our mind and just unloading them and saying, all right, where do we start? What's that next step? And coming back to our, our coaching relationship, our, our coaches talked about the difference between kind of running races and running on a trail. You know, if you're running a race, you're trying to compete against the clock, best times, and you're competing against other people. But when you're on a trail, it's like one foot in front of the other. It's a very simple, you can't get too far ahead or you're going to trip and fall. It's a meandering path. So the simplification is really coming back to one step at a time and not getting overwhelmed with the hundreds of steps that it's going to take to get from here to there. Yeah. And I like the distinction between simplification, simplify, and easy because- mm. Wow. To be simple is not necessarily to be easy. And, and the irony is sometimes the easy path builds in complexity. 
oftentimes we'll, we'll find ourselves moving down a path and we say, okay, I need to fix something. So we bolt on the next thing and we bolt on the next thing. Yes. And then you look up and you have a sea of complexity. Whereas maybe what should be done is to try to clear the path, think about things through a clear you know, set of eyes and say, okay, now how can I simplify this process? So I, yes. I, I think that's a really important distinction because there's a lot of work into simplifying the situation. But in the long run, it reduces stress and makes everybody feel better and more productive. Yep. All right. So those are our three words for 2023. We have influence, confidence, and simplify. And as you can see, you know, it's a way for us to stop and think about what we're doing. We bring them up in team meetings. We talk about them and it kind of, everyone snaps back to it and say, okay, that, that's what we're trying to do here. And it really is embraced by the team. Think about your family, think about your spouse or your couple relationship. And what are the things that you want to talk about this year to bring you back to that focus that's going to help you to be more successful in 2023. So we look forward to seeing you again soon and have a great rest of the week. Take care.